um, we all read along. Now we saw what God did at the beginning. After he created Adam, he placed Adam in the garden of Eden. At this time, at the earlier part of chapter 3, and the, the trees had not started budding. The fruit had not started producing. The seeds had not started producing fruit. But he sent water. He, he sent water upon them and they started budding. And then scripture says he placed man in the garden of Eden. And then there was a river that flowed from, from Eden to the garden that watered the garden. So he, man had everything that he wanted. Adam had every food he wanted to eat and in this same garden the four rivers we are, the, the rivers we are splitted into four heads one went to python where there was gold there was bidelium another translation says perfume there was onyx stone precious stone so if you were talking about silver gold and whatever treasure you can think of adam had it in the garden of eden at his disposal without stress, without struggle. The only thing God told Adam to do in, 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 in chapter 18, in Genesis 3, chapter, um, chapter 16, was that he should, keep the, he should keep the garden. He should dress it, chapter 15. That was the only instruction, to maintain it, to cultivate it. God placed him in affluence, in abundance, in wealth. With only one instruction, keep it, cultivate it, maintain it. The same way God brought Adam into abundance and affluence. God is in the business of bringing his people into abundance. The only problem is that some of us have wandered away from where God has planted us. God planted Adam in the place of settlement in the place of abundance it was still in this garden god told god god looked at adam and said it is not good that man should be alone and god gave him a wife that was complete settlement total settlement he did not have to struggle can we do away with the mentality that we must struggle before we prosper can we do away with the mentality that we must suffer before we prosper the curse that came upon Adam that we inherited in a way was not for us to actually suffer. When Jesus came, he said he abolished the law. He came, he set the law aside. So whatever the curse of the law brought, we are no longer under the curse of the law. If the curse that Adam brought upon himself by eating the fruit in the garden was for him to toil until to, to toil the ground before he could eat, Jesus came and abolished the law. Can you face your neighbor and say you are no longer under the curse of the law? You are no longer under the curse of the law. Jesus redeemed you. And that brings me to my next point. The love of God. The book of John chapter 3 verse 16 that we know very well for salvation story. I mean, when we want to get, um, when we want to testify about the salvation of God, we talk about the book of John 3 16. But I'm going to read it and I'm going to re read it again. And then listen to the context of that word. It says that, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Now something preceded his giving, love. There are principles for us believers that, in fact, whether you are a believer or you are an unbeliever, if you walk in some certain principles, you are going to be financially prosperous. There are so many people in the world making the, the, the big names, but they are not Christian. So it is not even about you being a fervent Christian or not. But what makes us better than them is that we do not have to labor and kill ourselves. We do not have to chase after money before we can be wealthy. 
Others can chase after wealth, they can chase after affluence, but no, not us. The only thing, the only person, the only king we chase after is God. And every other thing will be added unto us. The scripture says in that book of John chapter 3 verse 16, it says that God loved the world and he gave. This is a principle to actually get in redemption. So it tells you that God understands the principle of money. What is money? You use money to transact, to redeem something. You give money in return for something. So God gave his son in return for your redemption. He bought us with a price. We were bought with money. With the blood of Jesus signifying money. So God understand the principle of wealth. He understand what money is. He understand the principle of redemption. He bought you. You were not paid. For, you were not free. The blood of Jesus bought you from the hands of the devil. That, now, how do we actually walk in the prosperity and in the divine settlement that God has arranged for us? How do we live in the natural defaults that we have been created to become? Our default is that we should prosper and be in health even as our soul prospereth. That is the default for every believer. That is your default. Your default is that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. That is the default God has designed every one of us to do. Right from the beginning in Genesis, right from Adam, he gave Adam everything that he needed. Now, so many of us actually understand the principle of giving. If we ask anybody here, have you given before? Have you given to the Lord? Have you given to somebody in need? I would hear a yes. But sometimes, our giving needs to be checked. The motive behind our giving needs to be checked. There were two brothers in the scripture that went with gifts to the Lord. Cain and Abel. One's gift was accepted, one's gift was rejected. The motive. Giving, when it is backed up with love, produces result. But giving, when it is backed up with lust, lust in the sense that the book of James 1 14 says, when a man is drawn away of his own lust. Now you are giving to God, knowing that Shabbi, they said you will give me back. You are expecting something in return. Take a picture of lust in the in the lust in the in the sense that we know lust as. However, lust can be indifferent from it's not only women you lust after, you lust after things of the world, you lust after pride of life, the pride of the you lust after things of the whatever things of the world means to you now when you love a woman you give to her someone that lost after a woman also gives to her but with different motive when you love a woman sincerely you can die for her just as christ died for the church but when you lost after a woman when it becomes tough you leave that is the way some of us are treating the God that died for us. We give our tithes, okay, but we are lusting after what you can collect from God, not because you love God. That is why there is so much contention about tithe giving now. It is an Old Testament religion. It is this, it is that. But when you come to the realization that you love God the same way he loved you in John 3:16. This love was unconditional. He did not know that you would love him. He did not know that you would be born again. He said, while you were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So what am I trying to say this afternoon? God desires that every one of his children prospers. But there are principles for us believers 
for us to actually walk in that stressful part where you don't have to sweat like every other person before you can eat. Then you have to learn the principle of giving. And giving with love. Not giving because I said you should give. Not giving because you want God to get you that job next week Monday. Not giving because you are going for an interview. And you want God to show forth himself in that interview. Give because you love God. Whether things are good or not, pay your tithe. Whether you see results or not, keep paying your tithe. Keep giving to the Lord brings me to my next point in the book of genesis 2 settlement contentment god placed adam in the garden of eden that was where his settlement was that was where his blessing was god did not create any man on this earth without giving you a settlement he did not create you and dumped you he created every one of us and placed us in our garden. So the moment you see that you are struggling, first question you ask yourself, am I in my place? Or have I wandered away? Am I still in the place that God has called me to be? Am I still in the place that God has grounded me to be? I studied fisheries and aquaculture in the university and I actually prayed about my course of study. I heard God well. He said to study computer science. I was sure. And I filled in computer science in my jam and I got fisheries and aquaculture. I was devastated, angry. What is fisheries? I didn't even know what it means. Am I supposed to go and be killing fish? So I studied the course for five years, Federal University of Technology, Akure. And then I served. But I was not fine. I was not settled. My passion, my ambition for software became, it became anger. So when I see someone studying programming, I am angry. I think the person offended me. I was not settled. I lost my peace. I lost my joy. But I kept serving God wholeheartedly, although I had my questions. Somehow, somehow, I cannot say I'm smart, I cannot say I'm that good. I stumbled upon an opportunity for me to get back in line into software engineering. And I followed it. It's not because I am smart or I am, I am great, but it's because I stayed in my place where God planted me and my abundance was there what i needed was there so i could just stretch out and pluck a fruit that i needed to eat at the time at the time i at the time i think i, I, I took online courses for like six months it earned me the job that so many people that studied computer science we are keep we are queuing for So there is a benefit of staying in your place of assignment, of staying in your place of settlement. The kind of prayers I prayed at the time, when I realized that God had opened a window for me, God had given me another chance to pursue my career. I told God, if by adventure I have wandered out of the abundance you have created me into, bring me back. If I have gone out of the default, of the prosperity of the stressless life that you have created me to bring me back and i went for interviews it was like i studied i was even better than than what than than if than those that actually did the course or had been had been programming for years it was to the glory of god what am i trying to say to you this afternoon whatever you are looking for whatever you desire whatever you can think or you can ever imagine your provision is where god has put you located that provision is where god planted you locate it find your spot and stay there be contented don't be like adam he was doing well until one time the devil will always contend for your place 
Do you know why the devil did not go and tempt Eve to, do, to masturbate or to commit fornication or to steal or to lie? But he tempted Eve to take of God's divine portion. If you also read that Genesis 3, it says, of all the fruits in the garden, eat anything you like, take of it. Every provision in this garden is your own. Everything. The tree of life, it is your own. The onyx stone, it is your own. The bedellium, it is your own. The perfume, it is your own. The gold, it is your own. The, as much as you, all the animals, they are yours. But one, only one, only one, one tree, one tree, do not eat of this. Another point, which brings me to another point. Some of us are eating God's portion, the divine portion of God. We are eating it and we are expecting to be blessed. We are eating God's portion. God says, one tenth is for me. But that is, it is that one tenth that you want to use to buy shoe. It is that one tenth you want to go and add to the money you want to give your mother. It is that one tenth that your eyes will be poking into. How can God trust you? God is a businessman. If he cannot trust you that he does business with you, he will get his share. He will not commit wealth into your hands. He will not commit affluence into your hands because you are a cheater. I'm trusting God that after this service today, somebody here will find their place. Somebody here will stay in their place of settlement. And somebody here will understand purpose. And somebody here will be faithful to God from today. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear a loud amen in the house? The spirit of contentment. Pastor Matthew Ashimolowo told us yesterday. It does not matter where you are coming from. Where you have been to. You are not the first, you will not be the last. And you will not be, you are not even the first, so you can't be the last. However, standing on his point, he said, wash your face. Opportunities are flying everywhere. There are opportunities in every sector. There are opportunities in every area. As long as you can think of it, you can get it. But the problem is our minds are too shallow. We are shallow in thinking. We think as far as our eyes can see. We think as far as our hands can reach. Where is the word? Where is the word? First Timothy says that Renew your mind daily with the word of God. Let your mind be transformed. We, he has bought you with a price. Stop thinking like a mediocre. Upgrade your thinking to kingdom level. Think as a kingdom person. Think possibilities where others are seeing impossibilities. Have you, have you forgotten that scripture that says when others are saying there is a casting down? What is your testimony? When others are saying Nigeria is bad, dollar is just rising, what is your own testimony? So you cannot afford to stay in that place where it's not comfortable for you. You cannot afford to stay in the place where God did not put you because you want to fit in to the system, you want to fit in to whatever the economy is putting you into. I don't care what you are doing. If you are a teacher, own it and be proud of it. If you are a farmer, own it and be proud of it. I studied fishes and I stayed for the five years because I was trusting God that maybe, maybe God had a place for me here. Yeah. 
the five years I was serious, I was praying, I, God just make a way for me. I made friends, maybe if I made friends with people that were, that were good in the, in the class, I would be better. No, it was not working. I tried my, my best, my humanly best and godly best. But no, it was not working. So, my di deviating to software was not because fisheries is not a good thing. A lot of people are, in, are doing fisheries and they are making good money. So, whatever you are doing, be contented with it. God placed you there for a reason. The first thing you should check within yourself, is this where God puts me? If it is where God puts me, there is no devil that can stop me from prospering. That demon has not been created. I will prosper. Can we come out of the mindset of my uncle did not answer me, my, my sister disappointed me, my uncle in the US is doing something, my uncle, you have God. You don't need anybody. The only person you need is God. You have everything that you need. So stay with God. Fight for your destiny. And stop grumbling. Be contented with where God puts you. And till the ground. Maintain the harvest. Maintain that land that God has given to you. Cultivate it. That was the assignment God gave Adam. He told him, just maintain the land. If I have a father, I have a father. It's not a if. I have a father. And trust me, when I was in school, in fact, if it's not even important, once I pick call, they say we should buy this one a lot on my phone. My dad cannot see me suffering. If he does not have it, he will look for it. And we teenagers, we are so spoiled. We don't even care where they get the money from. It's as if we are the one working for the money in their pocket. I need this thing now, now, like you are commanding your dad. And he will give it to you, whether you command him or not, is his responsibility. So if your earthly father can respond to your impulse, can respond to your, to your heart's desire, how much more your heavenly father? Use God. If you don't use God, when you are on earth, is it in heaven you want to use God? Whatever you desire, you don't have to struggle for it. If there is any point that I want us to take from here, is that there is everything that you need to prosper is available. It is available. There are lots of points I would like to raise, but I would like us to also pray. I don't care the demon that followed you down here. But I come in the spirit of a prophet. I come with the anointing of a prophet. And I am trusting God today that the spirit of light and revelation will be released upon you today. You will not go back the same way you have come. Whatever is fighting with your place for you, I am trusting God for strength for you that you will be able to fight back in the name of Jesus. Can we be upstanding? Just to round up. I know that you would... I have not spoken about managing your finances and everything. But then a point came to me. What are you managing when there is abundance, actually? What are you managing? Don't manage God's, God's finances for him. Of course, you manage your, you, you do your financial budget. But when I say don't manage God, some of us, we are pitying God. Like if I ask for a big car, God will go bankrupt. If I ask for a jet, everyone will close. You will not be able to give other people asking for things again. Tell your neighbor, there is no amount of things you ask from God that can close God's bank account. You cannot out-ask God. You cannot out-ask the God, the, the, you cannot out-ask 
big blessings God has for you. Can you lift up your voice today to God? While I was praying, I trusted God. I said, I don't know everyone personally. I don't know you by name. But I know a maker that knows you by name. I know a king that knows you by your name. And so, my assignment here will not be done if God did not meet you personally at the point of your need. I know we are not all the same. Whatever issues I am facing financially, not making me prosper, might not be the exact same one you have. But the grace of God is here. The spirit of prophecy is in this house. The hand of the Lord is in this place. Can you open your hands to God? I want you to open your arms to God as if you are partnering with God. I want you to open your arms to God as if you are partnering with God. Open your arms as if you are in a partnership, you are in a bonding with God. And pray and ask God, I need you to partner with me. I need you to partner with me. I cannot speak enough English to bring you into the plans and ideas that God has for you. But if only you can see into the mind of God to see the provisions that he has for you, maybe you will be serious with your life. And that is why I'm trusting God for the spirit of revelation today, that your eyes will be opened to see how much resources you have all around you, to see how much abundance is all around you, to see how much God has to give you so that you will not only be blessed in your lifetime, but the kind of blessing that will last you to your generation. The kind of blessing called generational blessing. The kind of blessing they gave Abraham. That even his descendants, we are still enjoying it. Jesus, say thank you, Jesus. Come and put us hands together.